Today I'm um, introducing the assignment of drawing the six wooden mannequin figures. We are going to use this IKEA mannequin, and um, it's, it's about $8.99 from IKEA, which is an excellent, excellent buy if you want to try this activity at home. I have the Strathmore mixed media paper, or you can work in your sketchbook. I have the Prismacolor 3 eraser pack, but the only eraser that we need out of the pack, we have a kneaded rubber eraser, an art gum eraser, and a plastic eraser, is the kneaded eraser to make very nice gradual looking highlights. It removes uh, a little layer at a time of, of um, a layer at a time of pencil. The harder you press, the more it removes uh, for highlighting. And this plastic eraser removes your pencil very cleanly. So these are the two that we're going to use. The art gum creates too much debris, so I, I tend to not like this art gum eraser, but that's up to you. I want to pose the IKEA mannequin in a dynamic pose, just like uh, when my class was drawing um, our fellow classmates, something with lots of negative and positive space between the arms and the legs. I don't want to pose the, uh, the mannequin doing something that's not possible for the human body to do because then it will be unrealistic. And the purpose of my course is to learn to draw realistically and figuratively. That means not the opposite of, of abstract. So it, I want this mannequin drawing to look exactly like this wooden mannequin figure. So this is my first pose. And my class is being asked to draw six different poses. The mannequins are to be fully shaded uh, with their drawing pencil set. I'm going to start off with a 2H pencil so that I'm, uh, I create a very, very light line drawing to start with. And then I'm going to shade with a variety of different pencils uh, going from HB all the way down to 4B or 6B for the darkest shadows. The mannequin is not a white painted mannequin. It is a natural light pine wood mannequin. So it's a colored mannequin. There should be a, a little bit of uh, a light gray value at least over the whole mannequin to begin with. But let's start with the line drawing of the mannequin. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Do some sort of a dynamic pose that may include uh, foreshortening where the legs are bent and they're coming at you at all kinds of interesting angles. Uh, the mannequin's not going to be as flexible as a real human, but you know it's a good starting place to learn how to draw the human form. I would start about an inch or about an inch or two down from the top of the paper. I want to first draw, uh, lightly sketch the mannequin with the HB pencil. So just very, very lightly. I don't want my line drawing to be too dark because I want the shading to be uh, the main player in this in this drawing. Okay. Um, before we did this activity, my students had a um, we drew a human figure called the Eight Heads Tall Female, and I gave a packet which had an Eight Heads Tall Male and Female figure, and so we tried to draw the female figure. And we used the head as, um, a, as a part of the body that we would compare all the other parts of the body to, to kind of keep our mannequin in proportion. So everything goes back to drawing um, the, to comparing things to the size of the head. I'm going to draw the bead for the neck here. 
And when I do that, I want to draw a full circle, even though a part of this, this little wooden bead that's the head, uh, the neck of the mannequin is inside of the headpiece because uh, I want to get the curvature on the side of the neck to be more accurate. The lower part of this little spear here is kind of under inside of the chest piece as well. So it's going to part of that, the lower part will be erased, but we'll do that later. I want to look at the chest piece for the mannequin. And when I look at that, I want to I want to draw that accurately and in proportion to the head. So what I would do is take my pencil, use the point as a starting place and slide my thumb down to wherever the bottom of the headpiece is and use that measurement and put that up against um, you would have to use your arms and put them straight out as far as they could go to first measure the headpiece. If you ever see artists doing that, what they're doing is using their pencils as like a measuring device, using the point as one at the, as the starting point of a measurement and sliding their thumb down to the base of something. And then what you want to do is take that same measurement and compare that to another part of the mannequin body. And I can tell right away that the mannequin body is, is definitely longer in length. And maybe it's hmm, maybe one fifth longer. So I definitely want, I definitely know that it has to be drawn longer. So just use light sketch lines. So here's the measurement of the head. Here, I'm gonna draw two arrows, that's the measurement. And then I need the chest piece to be at least that measurement, plus maybe one fifth more. The shoulders of this particular uh, mannequin are very curved and sloped downward. So I want to make sure that I capture that detail. Right at the base, I see a convex line because this line right here is lower than my eye level. My eye being higher up than right here where the waist hits on the mannequin. So I see kind of a downward curve. If it was eye level, it would be straight. And if I was looking up at the mannequin, which is around the head, I'd actually see the underside of the head. And what's interesting is I do see it, and so I would have to draw it. So I see a little bit of the underside of the headpiece, and that expresses how thick that piece of wood is for that little headpiece. The ball for the waist partially is inside the upper chest cavity. Okay, the upper chest cavity has a upside down teardrop shape uh, flat area. The reason why they did that is to show that this is the front of the mannequin. It has these little cuts and, and the back is rounder. Then I see the top of the waist portion of the mannequin right here. Also I want to see like what kind of um, pose is this this part of the body, the chest and, and pelvic area taking. And it seems to be pretty straight. It's not flexing outward in any kind of uh, dramatic direction. Okay, I'm going to measure again and I'm going to measure the head of my mannequin and then I'm going to slide it down to to the hip and I actually find that the hip has to be shorter than the overall length of the head. So let's make that uh, hip area on this Ikea mannequin appear short. You know the hip is facing front because you might want to draw a line down the center of the body my mannequin is slightly turned at a three-quarter um, view angle. So we're seeing more of the right side of this mannequin's body. 
Okay. The the shoulders are these little wooden beads that are little balls and they also partially uh, go into the side of the mannequin. They're not right at the shoulder line or but just a little bit below. And then this this mannequin's uh, sh this side of the mannequin's shoulder is overlapped by the chest here so you should not really show the whole circle if you do draw it you can erase it because this part of the chest is overlapping and hiding that sphere if you see screws on the mannequin draw them try to draw every detail that you can see it'll make your uh, drawings more interesting and more realistic because you want to drive it home to um, your viewer, your uh, art viewer, that you are not drawing a real person, you're drawing this wooden figure.